here who practices in Jupiter, Florida. Rob has a very, very strong practice. He has learned to integrate adhesives and aesthetic dentistry into a mainstream practice. And for many of you, you know, that's sort of tough to do that in these times. Rob is a, a, a lecturer. He and his partner, Chris Ramsey, lecture in lots of places. They have been hosted by a number of Seattle study clubs. I know you're going to really enjoy what you have to hear from Rob Ritter. Are you ready? ready. Here he goes. Rob Ritter, everybody. Hello. Thanks, Sandy. OK. Let me grab this. Hello, everyone. Um, I want to say, first of all, um, thank you to all of my friends and special mentors who are here today. There's a lot of you in the crowd, and it's, it's great to be here. And to Michael Cohen and the whole Seattle Study Club for having me. I really appreciate the opportunity to spend some time with you today. I have a limited amount of time, so I'm going to jump right into it. One of the great things about doing one of these sort of uh, showcases or a 20-minute presentation is I get to go through some real meat instead of fluff and get right to it. And you're going to see me play off of some of the information that we saw this morning from both Avishai and from John. Now, before I jump into the dentistry, I do want to mention this. Uh, the reason I'm here today, besides my partner practicing in the office and keeping the numbers rolling, is my family. And they couldn't be with me today. However, um, without my wife and without my daughter, I couldn't be here today. And quite honestly, on bad days, uh, and I do have them in my practice, when I come through that door and my daughter comes running through my house into my arms, uh, it's the best thing in my life. It's the most important thing in my life. That's my, that's my love. I have a passion for dentistry, but my love is my family. And the reason I also put this up here is because my beautiful daughter, Olivia, is a, um, is a product of technology. She's an IVF baby. And I do thank God every day for that, because without technology and without moving forward, I wouldn't have her in my life, and my life wouldn't be complete without her. So I can't be with her this week, but I want you to see what we're all about, because I do have a life outside of dentistry. OK. You know, this morning, um, some of my mentors who are here, like Bill Robbins, Jeff Rouse, talk about vertical maxillary excess. And we look at short teeth, and we look at uh, longer teeth, and too much maxilla. And we also talk about interdisciplinary treatment planning, where I work with a, uh, a periodontist to get rid of the ver vertical maxillary excess and take this girl, who is now a woman, doing what we call, I, I like to call it selective reduction. I don't like to call it minimal prep. I don't like to call it uh, no prep, because there is no such thing, um, into something like this. And yeah, I love to prep teeth um, and do it as minimally as possible. In this case, I'm literally removing off 0 0.1, 0 0.2 millimeters of enamel, keeping it all in, all in enamel. And the whole idea is that we're able to do some very, very minimal dentistry for this young woman. And these are actually pressed lithium disilicate. There's an article uh, that I just did on this. We're able to take lithium disilicate now to, down to 0 0.2, 0 0.3, like Avishai said. And so now material selection is off the table. What we're able to do is take this young woman and turn her into, uh, for me, a very pleasing moment in my career, which was I was just on the cover of the Journal of the American Academy of Cosmetic Dentistry. And within this magazine, there's an, also an article on me using lithium disilicate pressed down to 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and a lot of care as taken to acquire this type of information. And so I would uh, refer to you the, uh, the article for you to take a look at. And yes, I do veneers, but as we just know, uh, as we just noticed from Kirk's uh, wonderful presentation, it's the percentage of my practice now. The majority is general dentistry every single day. And Michael has set up a great program about general dentistry. So that's what I'm going to talk to you about today. We're going to talk about glass ionomers and its role in dentistry. Now, I think on Wednesday, Kim Cooch is going to be talking to you about Canberra. And I'm not going to spend any time on Canberra because I have the very, very initial part of it, which is sealants and glass onomers. We seal teeth now. I've been using a lot of Fuji triage, and we'll talk about triage here in a moment. And what we do is we're able to seal teeth. The reason why I put this reference up also is uh, Jason Wanick is in my town. He's a, per he's a pedodontist, and he did the study on this. And this is what we use in our practice now. We use Fuji triage. 
Well, there's a whole bunch of reasons why we use Fuji triage. I don't have a lot of time to go into it right now. We'll get to it later in the presentation. When it comes to glass ionomers, this is the most underutilized restorative material we have here in the United States. I've been very lucky to travel all over the world and lecture, and in other parts of the world, like Australia, New Zealand, and in Europe and South America, glass ionomers play a very large part of general practice. Here in the United States, when they came out, they were overutilized. They were utilized in areas where they shouldn't have been, and they, and they failed. And what happens to the American, American dentist when something fails? We slam our hands on the, on the table and say, I'll never use that again. It's a failure. Well, it's because it wasn't used correctly. Of course, I believe in if all you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. The three companies that produce the majority of the glass ionomers are GC, 3M, and SDI. And I don't promote one product over another, but I will show you two clinical cases today. What I want to point out to you is the differences between composite and glass ionomer. Composites are tooth colored, and while glass ionomers are tooth colored, they don't have the same filler material that true composites do. They don't reflect light the same way. So make no mistake about it, while you will see delineations that say A1, A2, A3, B1, they don't look exactly like true composites do. Composites are higher strength, glass ionomers are not. They just don't have the sort of inherent strength that composites do because of the resin matrix. Composites, after you work with them a while, are fairly easier to place, whereas glass ionomers can be more difficult. And we'll talk about that in a few minutes as well. Composites don't release fluoride, and that's the major, major advantage to true glass ionomers is the massive amount of fluoride release. Where we use, where we use these is the key to fluoride release. And then bonds to dentin. Now, Composites themselves don't bond to dentin. Of course, what you have to use is some sort of an acid conditioner with an adhesive, and then yes, you can bond to dentin. And while it's fashionable for some of our mentors to tell us that you can't bond to dentin, and that it's a temporary seal, of which some of my temporary seals are now at 14 years, which is longer than some marriages, I think that you can bond to dentin. Glass ionomers do bond to dentin, both ionically and covalently, and we'll talk about that in a few moments. Now, true glass ionomers I want to delineate. We have glass ionomers, and then we'll eventually talk about resin-modified glass ionomers. True glass ionomers themselves have no resin in them whatsoever. You cannot light cure true glass ionomers. They are auto-cure, they self-cure on their own. The types that I use right now, some of which are from a company like GC, which were triage, let's go back here, um, triage white, uh, Fuji 9 Extra. Now, one of the things about Fuji Triage, which was made by a dentist, his name is Jeff Knight from Australia. And uh, Jeff Knight, Jeff Knight kind of talks like this, and uh, you've got to use Fuji Triage on everything. And of course, we don't use Fuji Triage for everything, but what Fuji Triage does is it has nine times the amount of fluoride release, which is very interesting. You don't need to pretreat the tooth structure, but you do use it to replace decayed tooth structure. The other type of glass ionomer is more rigid, which is Fuji 9, or Fuji Extra. Now, the great thing about glass ionomers is the ability to heal teeth. And we've seen this a little bit before. The speaker, a uh, couple of speakers before, said, let the body heal itself. Well, yes, that's a great idea, something we don't do here in the United States. In the United States, whatever there's disease, we remove it. We don't let the body heal itself in dentistry. Well, I'm here to tell you that in other countries, they've been doing this for many, many years. What happens is it forms a semi-permeable membrane. It lets some of the acids in. It also lets calcium and phosphate in to react with the fluoride. And basically, you remineralize the actual tooth structure itself. I like this approach. I'm going to show you a case where we use both triage and Fuji 9 Extra. This is a a 14-year-old girl who comes to our practice who has interproximal decay right here. Now, in most practices, you have a couple of options here. Some practices would do a class 2 amalgam. Some practices would do a class 2 composite. I'm going to show you something else that might stimulate some thought. Because this tooth is next to another tooth that has the beginnings of a lesion, I want to bathe these teeth in fluoride as much as I possibly can. So what do we do? We anesthetize the teeth, and we place it under a non-latex rubber dam, and we remove the decay. 
Now, I'm getting fairly close to the nerve, and in fact, I leave some of the demineralized dentin itself. I don't want a pulp exposure. What I utilize here is a Garrison dental solution ring. And, if, you know, there's a couple of ring systems out right now. There's one from Garrison, there's one from Triadent. We have both in the office. And what we do is we place the wedge and the sectional matrix in